Blossom Opry. How y'all doing tonight? All right. Well, we're the Orange Blossom Opry Band, and uh, what a day we've had all day hanging out with Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee. They are both here, and uh, great show this afternoon. We're uh, glad that you're all here uh, this evening. Hey, how many folks are here at the Orange Blossom Opry for the first time? We always like to see the first timers. Some new folks there, right there. It's your first time, sir. Where you been? <laughs> Can't tell me. Jail? <laughs> no, no. Been a while there? All right, well, welcome to the show. We're the Orange Blossom Opry Band. For those new folks, uh, we play here on Thursday nights and Friday nights. And on the weekends, uh, we, uh, we kind of open for all of the Nashville acts that come through. So that's what we're doing out here. They call it opening. They call us warming you up, which means that you folks have got to make a lot of noise to get those guys, <coughs> because you got to wake them up. Now they've been back there eating dinner. They're all sleeping. <laughs> anyway, Sounds I want to take a second and uh, introduce the band to you before we play a few songs. The gentleman over here on my left, <coughs> he is uh, from the great state of Illinois. And he plays, are you all from Illinois? No, just like people. He's from the southern part, down where it's cool. That's the, the southern part. I mean, not, Chicago's okay, but you're not a Chicago guy, nah, are you? Forget about it. No. Forget about it. Anyway, he plays the uh, guitar, the, uh, the bass, the drums. He is our road manager, stage manager, tour manager, bus driver, and he works his tail off here at the Orange Blossom Opera. Everybody say hello to Kevin Kingston. <laughs> All right. And the gentleman next to uh, him... Over here, uh, playing the, uh, you, I'm not used to Todd being over there, so I forget about him being over there. Uh, the guy playing the fire out of the fiddle and just about anything else that he puts in his hands is from the great state of Iowa. All you locals know what to do on three, very loud. Ready? One, two, three. That's right. Doug Stock, everybody. Say hello to Doug. <laughs> the, uh, the guy over there, way over there, uh, showed up today with uh, something. We're not sure what it is. It's not COVID or anything like that, but we decided that he needs to stay away from the rest of the band. It's um, just, it doesn't look good, but he is uh, the hands uh, from the state of Florida, by the way. Say hello to the handsome and talented. That's Todd Bowers, everybody. <laughs> the newest member of the Orange Blossom Opry is right back there, and he is from Bandera, Texas. Uh, you always got to have a Texan in the band. And he sings a mighty fine song and plays the fire out of the guitar. Everybody say hello to Mickey Adams. <laughs> All my stuff's back there, so I got to keep running back and forth. Uh, our lead singer, ladies and gentlemen, from Nashville, Tennessee, plays, uh, plays the fire out of the piano and is a harmonica playing fool. He also plays the guitar, drums, pedal steel, and is an unbelievable accordion player, an accomplished accordion player, got many records out in Poland. And um, <laughs> yeah. All right. please say hello to Mr. Dustin Jenkins right there. <laughs> Moving right along, the sixth member of the Orange Blossom Opry Band is quite possibly the most important. He is right down this aisle right here. He is twice Grammy nominated. That's hard for me to say. Twice Grammy nominated uh, for his engineering work with Dolly Parton. Please say hello to our pal Nathan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> And the young lady up there in the crow's nest on the ride, she, uh, so there's no pictures tonight. Is that what's going on? Because no, Mickey Gilly messed it up. He did? <laughs> he came in here and messed up our stuff? Hmm. Imagine that. No, anyway, uh, we're just kidding. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can't see her, but she's our blonde bombshell up there on the right. Please say hello to Karen. She takes care of all the video work. <laughs> are we live on Facebook? <laughs> we are. We're live on Facebook, everybody. So if uh, you're not supposed to be with her, uh, you might want to move over because we're... <laughs> Live on Facebook. That's Karen. And uh, the guy up there running all the lights, uh, his name is Fast Eddie. Everybody say hello to Fast Eddie. I need to say hello to my mom who's watching. And uh, Heather, can I say this now about on Facebook? Because, folks, you are watching on Facebook. We have a very special treat for you because uh, Mickey Gilly is going to stream the uh, last show on Facebook. So you'll be able to see it tonight on Facebook, all you folks watching. There's folks that watch all over the world, y'all. It's pretty crazy. Um, I forgot my name, but I think it's Bobby Randall, and we're going to play a couple songs for you. The closer you get, come on, 
the further I fall I'll be over the edge now in no time at all I'm falling faster and faster and faster with no time to stall the closer you get the further I fall The things that you say to me The look on your face Brings out the man in me Do I see a trace of love in your eyes? The closer you get The further I fall I'll be over the edge now no time at all I'm falling faster and faster and faster with no time to stall the closer you get the further I fall could I be dreaming is this really real there's something magic The way that I feel in your arms Tonight, the closer you get The further I fall I'll be over the edge now In no time at all I'm falling back with no time to stall The closer you get The further I fall I keep falling I'm falling Yes, I'm falling Yes, I'm falling I'm falling I keep falling The closer you get the further I fall, I'll be over the edge now in no time at all. I'm falling faster and faster and faster with no time to stall. The closer you get, the further I fall. The closer you get, the further I fall. I'm born to love again, I'm a brand new man. Y'all ready to have a good time tonight? Let me hear you. Hey! Well, the whole town's talking about the line I'm walking that leads right to your door. Oh, how I used to know I was a rolling stone. Well, I used to have Outside. They say a country mile wide I'd burn those beer joints down That's all changed now You turn my life around Oh, I saw the light I've been baptized by the fire And your touch and the flame in your eyes I'm born to love again I'm a brand new Anything I've ever known, we're right on track. I ain't looking back. Oh, I saw the light. I've been baptized 
Ah, little Brooks and Dunn for you there. We'll slow it down just a little bit now and do a little Vince Gill for you. Doug Stock as he plays for you on the steel tonight. Should have done this and should have done that 
Should have been there and she'd have never left Should have been hanging on every word she ever had to say It's a little too late, she's a little too gone She's a little too right, I'm a little too wrong Now would be a good time to change, it's a little too late Tell three. And to my surprise, he then wasn't mad at me. <laughs> well, I thought she finally realized not to worry, I'd be home. Then I realized this morning she was gone. Well, I should have done this and I should have done that. Should have been there and she'd have never left. Should have been hanging on every word she ever had to say. It's a little too late, she's a little too gone She's a little too right, I'm a little too wrong Now it'd be a good time to change, it's a little too late It's a little too late, she's a little too gone She's a little too right, I'm a little too wrong Now would be a good time to change, it's a little too late Yeah, now would be a good time to change, but it's a little too late stuff's back there, so I got to keep walking over there. That's Kevin Kingston, everybody. But I bet right now, I bet you folks are saying, yeah, that, that Hey Dougie's kind of a big deal. I was just saying that. <laughs> Usually, uh, one of your big songs uh, you can't do tonight. That's, that's true. That's right. We do one of the Johnny Lee's songs. Actually, we do a couple of his songs. I suppose we should... I gave him permission to... He could do it. Yeah, I, I guess we'll... <laughs> I guess we'll let him sing his songs tonight. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. All right. What are you doing? Oh, I might do some Wade Hayes, though. He's not here tonight. He's not here, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Take it slow Another part says let go Don't Stop Don't Stop Don't stop doing what you're doing to me Think we're moving way too fast We need to take it slow Make it last That. Now don't stop, don't stop, don't stop doing what you're doing to me. Watch the flame of love burn out Burning love can take its toll I don't want to lose control Now don't stop Don't stop Don't stop doing what you're doing to me Now don't stop Don't 
stop, don't stop doing what you're doing to me now. Don't, don't stop doing what you're doing to me now. Don't stop, don't stop doing what you're doing to me and don't, don't stop doing what you're doing to me now. Don't stop, don't stop doing what you're doing to me. I sing with Dougie. I, you're way back there. I can't sing. So I'm back there and singing. Don't. I don't know what the heck I was singing. But <laughs> don't only stop two words, would be a and good I messed start. Them up. Yeah. I couldn't figure out if they went don't stop. stop. Or don't don't stop. stop. Yeah. It's not easy. Don't try this at home, folks. This is not easy. Hey, y'all say hello to Mickey Adams. Hi, everybody. Y'all going to come see Mo Bandy? I'm going to do a Mo Bandy song for you. I'm What's the date on that, Bobby? When's Mo Bandy going to be here? Mo yeah. and Joe. Yep, he will. I don't know. <laughs> Roger will kill me. Hey, what I will tell you, folks, they have these magazines, tons of them in the lobby. Pick one up because it's got all the dates of everything that's coming. And, uh, and two real important shows. Blackhawk, come to see them. They're my buddies, and they're incredible. And, hey, sir, we get a lot better. It's not. Okay. We'll wait for you. We'll, we'll be we'll, done by the time you get back. <laughs> And, um, and Dougie's having a show, folks. I'm not sure when, but Dougie's going to have the Hey Dougie Steel Guitar Show. That's it. Yep, yep. It's going to happen. I talked to the boss. I suppose it'll be sometime in February because uh, when Kevin and I were talking to Roger, he said, uh, well, he said it'd be a cold day in hell before. <laughs> before you, no, I don't, I don't know what it is. It'll, be watch, it'll probably be sometime in March or April, but we're going to do the Hey Dougie Steel Guitar Show. We all come and see that? I'm counting on you now. There's only four people clapping and six people yelling, so. Yeah, four tickets sold. Back to you, Mickey. I'm sorry. I don't know when Mo Bandy's coming, but they are. He and uh, Joe Stampley are coming. Mo and Joe. Who was once Hook in the sun of the dawn Who kept the pipe Hidden out behind shoot number one Well, who was riding high To the pretty girl she rode into the ground And he did knows where to find me Bandy the rodeo clown And in the riding and the roping I'm closing in on number one My dreams at night I'd ride upon A silver saddle that I never won Since she left me the whiskey that takes me to the rodeo ground Where the girls all think I'm handy Bandy the rodeo ground Well I could ride them all The bulls and the bronx do I was boss Ride that woman took me off Broke a whole lot more than this old cowboy's heart See the tears on my makeup Melt my painted smile into a frown Any kid knows where to find me Bandy the rodeo clown Doug Stock on the steel guitar
inside a mall The Bulls in the Bronx knew I was boss But the ride that woman took me on Broke a whole lot more than this old cowboy's heart See the tears on my makeup Built my painted smile into a frown Any kid knows where to find me Band be the rodeo clown Yeah, all the girls think I'm a dandy Band be the rodeo clown That's Mickey Adams, everybody. Good job, Mickey. Thank you, Good job. Well, you just got yeah. So we have a set list put up here, folks, and I, I put up a couple extra songs so we make sure we don't run out of songs. And then if we're getting to get too many songs, I, I cut one out because we don't want to run over. And these guys bet back here on what song I'll dump, and it's usually one of mine. And uh, so the first set cost uh, Dougie. Or did they both cost you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Dougie's 200 bucks in a hole. <laughs> We said you were going to cut one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my boss just handed me a note that said, uh, get your stuff and get out. And it then, <laughs> right underneath that, it said, Mo and Joe are on Sunday, January 23rd. So that's two shows uh, coming up uh, on the 23rd of uh, January. Uh, another band, let's do this song, y'all. Uh, what key is this in? E. Uh, these guys are coming too. Another band. Uh, I, they're called. Uh, what are they called? Diamond Rio. That's right. Diamond Rio. One, two, three, it was seven hundred fence poles from your place to ours. Neither one of us was old enough to drive a car Well, sometimes it was raining and Sometimes it would shine But we wore out that gravel road Between your house and mine I start walking your way You start walking mine We'd meet in the middle Keep that old Georgia pine We gain a lot of ground Cause we both We said our vows Under that old pine tree You always see it now Standing in the backyard Reminding me and you If we don't see eye to eye There's something we can do I start walking your way You start walking mine We meet in the middle Keep that old Georgia pine
Well, I about had enough of this. I'm old and tired. Uh, folks, we're going to do you one more song. And uh, what we, hold on. How about a hand for Bobby's a quit, but. I, I love your, I love well, your cord, Bobby. It's just like. Look, man, everything's <laughs> gone. My wireless quit working, so I've got this cord that works really good, man. <laughs> Hey, I've been in this business for 50 years, so don't try this at home. You get away from me. All right, we're going to... Uh, that's awful loud. Usually all of my stuff is here, and you don't even see me do it. I do it with all my feet. But there's a reason my stuff's back there, and you'll find out about that later. But for right now, we'll just, uh, I thought we'd do a song. I had an old buddy that uh, I hung around with a lot, and uh, he was my idol, actually, when I was a young kid growing up. I'd become really good friends with him, and the last time I saw him, he said, uh, here, you can have this bow. You earned it. And he gave me this bow, and uh, so I thought maybe we'd play a song uh, by uh, uh, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> uh, wait a second. The problem is... We can't ever get our drummer going. If you all could give him some kind of, hey, something. A little, a little something. A little more, a little more. <laughs> The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind. He was way behind. He was willing to make a deal. He came upon this young lad sawing on a fiddle and playing it hot. The devil jumped up on a hickory stump and said, boy, let me tell you what. I bet you didn't know it, but I'm a fiddle player too. And if you care to make a dare, well, I'll make a bet with you. Well, you play pretty good fiddle, son, but give the devil his due. I bet a fiddle of gold against your soul, because I think I'm better than you. The boy said, my name's Bobby, and it might be a sin, but I'll take your bet you're going to regret, because I'm the best it's ever been. Johnny, rousing up your bow and play your fiddle hard, because hell's broke loose in Georgia and the devil deals the cards. If you win, you get this shiny fiddle made of gold. If you lose, the devil gets your soul. opened up his case and he said I'll start this show fire flew from his fingertips as he rosined up his bow then he pulled the bow across the strings and it made an evil hiss and a band of demons all joined in and it sounded something like this finished it, Johnny said. You're pretty good there, son. But sit down in that chair right there. Let me show you how it's done. He played fire on the mountain, run, boys, run. It was in the house of the rising sun. Chicken in the red pad, picking out dogs. This goes out, don't tell no. Well, the devil bowed his head because he knew that he'd been beat. And he placed that golden fiddle on the floor at Johnny's feet. Johnny said, devil, just come on back if you ever want to try again. Because I told you once, you son, but I'm the best it's ever been. He played fire on the mountain, run, boys, run. The devil's in the house of the rising sun. Chicken in the bread pan, picking out doors. Red is a dog, die, don't you know.
Duck stock on the fiddle, everybody. We're the Orange Blossom Opry Band. We'll be right back in about 20 minutes with Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee. Make some noise. The Orange Blossom Opry Band, everybody.
Mickey Gilly. And over here to my right and your left, we have our product counter, and we have a lot of stuff that we would like to get rid of tonight and not have to take it back to Branson. We have a lot of great Urban Cowboy souvenirs, Johnny Lee stuff, Mickey Gilly stuff. Make sure you go over there and pick that stuff up and take it home with you because we don't want to put it back on the bus, okay? So a lot of great stuff for you to take home with you. Also, before we get started, we want to recognize all of our veterans. So if you are a veteran, would you please stand or raise your hand? Let's recognize all of our veterans. If we could have the lights up, please. Give them a big hand. God bless you and your families. Thank you for your service to our country. Well, if you're ready, we're ready. And here we go with a guy who has been looking for love in all the wrong places for a long time. Make welcome Mr. Johnny Lee as the Urban Cowboys ride again. Well, I spent a lifetime looking for you. Single bars and good time lovers. Never oh, turn that up, will you? It's my favorite song. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Lee.
Thank you very much, folks. Good to be back here at the opera again. Here's a song I recorded a while back. Picking up strangers Let me tell you about the danger If you don't like taking chances Then better keep moving on, my friend Picking up strangers Let me tell you about the danger Some are just coming, they just say Next thing you know Sometimes it's so light Seems like a highway Just keeps rolling On and on On that highway You meet a lot of strangers There's a lot of danger On your way home Picking up strangers Let me tell you about the danger If you don't like taking chances Better keep moving on my friend Picking up strangers Let me tell you about the danger Some are just coming in the They say you know what to do Picking up strangers, let me tell you about the danger. If you don't like taking chances, then better keep moving on, my friend. Picking up strangers, let me tell you about the danger. Some are just nothing to say. They say you know what to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you know, so I'm sitting down tonight. I want to be just like y'all. No, actually, I've got Parkinson's, and so uh, it is what it is. Okay. Main thing is, I'm still here, and y'all still here. Thank you very much. My guitar player from California is here with his beautiful wife, Joe Campbell. Stand up, Joe, take it back. So, played together for a long, long time. Uh, here's a song I did called One in a Million, my second number one song.
Amen. Thank you. Now, I joke around about uh, me sitting down. I just read them really sitting down as uh, I joined the gym not too long ago. Try, not try to be like Mickey Gilly. And what was that paper I had to sign before? Emergency contact? Yeah, yeah. That's it. And so I signed the paper and everything, joined the gym, and I fell off the toilet. <laughs> I, I thought it was a rolling machine. <laughs> and uh, kind of hurt myself pretty bad. And pulled muscle way up here, way up here. It hurt me. Oh, Lord, it hurt me. <laughs> and uh, my uncle loves me better than anybody else in the whole family does, right? So uh, the mercy contact that I signed, uh, whatever they call my uncle, I don't know what they give you today. Drop what he's doing. Come pick me up right then. <laughs> Ozarks. Bless his heart. I still love my uncle. Too. <laughs> Come on, Brenda. Don't sing the song. Don't come on. Georgina won the female vocalist of the year. Yeah, get it right. Yeah. The last show, he said, I won the male vocalist of the year. Where's that valve at? Where's that valve? We got that valve. Prisoner of Hope. The last show I did. So I'm going to go ahead and do it now. My friend says she's so sophisticated.
another song that Kirk recorded a long time ago. This is one right here. Call it on the bartenders. <laughs> Went partying the other night. Started drinking and got real tight. We were playing with all my friends. Felt so good that we couldn't get. Hey, bartender. Hey, bartender. Hey, bartender. Hey, bartender. Hey, bartender. As sweet as can be. One of them, definitely. Hey, bartender. 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 Hey, My daughter wrote a song for me, uh, about me. She called me on the telephone a while back and she asked me all kinds of silly questions. About my childhood and what I was doing growing up and things like that. That was, that was fun. So I felt obliged to put it on my new album that I have out now. And uh, 
Be Georgina to sing this for you. It's going to be released in June for Father's Day. It's called, I was born to be my father's daughter. Here's Georgina to sing it. He was one of six on the day we were born. Never knew his daddy, so that must have been hard. Shipped out at 18. You gotta fight for what you believe in. He was born to hit the road. With that big old Texas soul. His heart is fast and wild. Blue bonnets in a field. That man's just like an old man His will is made of steel And my love runs just like his does Whiskey with the splash of gold and water I was born to be my father's daughter He says the grass ain't greener on the other side Georgina Holiday. I'm not that. his daughter, but it got me. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Yeah. You did a great job on it. We did a job in South Texas, uh, Lotus, Texas. You know what I said? All right. Well, uh, you know, we played Flores Country Store. You know what I said? You've been there, huh? Yeah, baby, give us a little. Let me be on you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so anyway, it gets hotter than 80 down there in July. So what we do is ask to play inside that night. So when the band was doing the sound check, when I could walk around the club, I was reading the, I was saying they let people write stuff on the walls. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, I found this one saying, I can't believe anybody and seen, picked up and wrote a song about you. But I did put on my new album. It's out now. The latest song for you. If you drive your husband drinking, drive him here.
You know, a, a guitar player, a regular guitar player has got COVID. He's home sick. Uh, oh, he's watching. We're live, you know. Well. He's streaming. I don't know. Well, hello. Hello, Mike. Hi. We got Bobby Randall on the guitar from the other band anyway. <laughs> Doing a great job, Bobby. Thank you, buddy. So I sent a wish after Mike Crosby would get well sometime soon. I got a new record that I'd like to sing, y'all. It's called Everything's Gonna Be All Right. Everything is gonna be all right. It's all or nothing, it's all on you. You wanna win, but sometimes you lose. You do your best and hold your head up high. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright Brand new day brings a brand new life Everything's gonna be alright Turn on the news and it's bad again Makes you wonder if it's ever gonna end Love's flowing somewhere deep and wide But everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright Everything's gonna be alright Brand new day brings brand new life Everything's gonna be alright Me and Tony went on a rope. Uh, somebody asked me one time, did I ever get tired of singing this song? No, I don't. I'm still looking for love in all the wrong places, y'all.
Vicky Guerra. If I sent a rose to you For every time you made me Nineteen seventy four, good year for Mickey Gilly. That was my first number one song. Room full of roses. Thanks, ladies, for making that song number one for me. Hey, Mama didn't raise no fool. When that song hit and went number one after struggling seventeen years in the music industry, I recorded every flower song I could find. Jam my knee. Well, actually, Room Full of Roses was was actually recorded for the what was called the B side back then. Yeah, it was a flip side of a song. Let's do a little part of the other one for him. This was an A-side, supposedly. She called me baby. That was a song that I went in to record, and the radio station flipped it and started playing the flower song, Room Full of Roses. became my first number one recording in 1974. You ladies opened a lot of doors for me back then, and I appreciate that. 
I have a friend tonight uh, that's celebrating his birthday. Mr. Shelby Wright is with me. And uh, I tell you what, I, I got to sing a happy birthday to him, folks. All right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. He asked me if I was going to do his favorite song tonight. I said, no. But you know what? It's his birthday and it's special, isn't it? <laughs> Give me the key. You won't know it. I've seen the way men turn their heads. He was Every time that she walks by, I've seen the way they look at her with hunger. Sensation. Wow. That song got banded off of the radio. <laughs> uh, I knew I recorded one that didn't make it. That's okay. That was one of his favorite songs, and Shelby, I hope you enjoyed that. I threw that in for you. Absolutely. The uh, next song I want to do for you is a flower song. Hey, I got hung up on them flowers. Hey, Mama didn't raise no fool. A room full of roses hit in 1974. I recorded every flower song I could find. I mean, I struggled 17 years in the music industry trying to have hit records. And all of a sudden, room full of roses goes number one. Don't you think I'm looking for flower songs? <laughs> Absolutely. I recorded room full of roses. I overlooked an orchid while searching for a rose. Big bouquet of roses, San Antonio rose. The only one I missed was tiptoe through the tulips. I got to that when I threw the towel in. I said, you know what? If the ladies want to hear Tiptoe Through the Tulips, I'll book Tiny Tim at Gillies and he can sing it. <laughs> and I did. I can still hear it today. Tiptoe Through the Tulips. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Let's do the song for him. The organ is a flower that blooms so tenderly to three.
that I love so. I can see the clouds are gathering and the storm will wreck our home. Well, last night he held you and you didn't even show. Making those songs number one for me, the country charts. Uh, you'd be surprised if I told you, uh, you know, when you start having the number one songs in the country charts after struggling 17 years in the music business, things begin to open up for me in Nashville, Tennessee. And for the first time in my life, I got to do uh, uh, the um, Pop Goes the Country with Ralph Emery. I got to do the Kirk and Chase show. I got to do the Marty Robbins show. Uh, I got to do the CMA Awards show. But I really, really got really thrilled and happy when they asked me to do Hee Haw. <laughs> because for a country act to do Hee Haw, that's like a pop act doing American Bandstand with Dick Clark. <laughs> and I'm excited because they asked Mickey Gilly to do Hee Haw. <laughs> I found this little bit I did with uh, Archie Campbell. So and I hope that you get a kick out of it because it's still funny today <laughs> after all these years. Here's me and Archie on Hee Haw. <laughs> You've seen it. Yeah. Do you know the tune? Just about it, ain't Well, the important part of the whole thing, of course, is when I go and get it on you, you know. All right. <laughs> yes, that's really easy to do. You don't do it to me, I do it to you, you okay. see. You understand? Gotcha. Like, <laughs> like that. I just want to be sure you understand. Yeah, I got you. And uh, w when you get to that part where you kind of turn around like this, and I'll give you. <laughs> <like that. laughs> I don't sing anything then. <laughs> I sing the last verse? Yeah. Oh, you got that part, but you understand? Well, no, I don't write ready. <laughs> the song is half as long as that explanation. We'll have to finish it next week. Well, I hope you enjoyed that because before this performance is over with today, I'm going to play you the first record I made back in 1957. And then you'll know why it took me 17 years to have a hit. <laughs> so we just bear here a few uh, a few minutes with me here before we do that. And I'll play it for you. I'll start to say a few hours. <laughs> I'm 
don't think I can last that long. <laughs> Uh, let's do just long as say goodbye. Could you spare me just a moment? I don't mean to waste your time Before you leave I'd like to tell you A few things On my mind You don't want me to say So I won't But you know I do can't change the way you're feeling by the way I feel for you. I'm not asking for a lifetime, just time enough for love to die. Not asking you to stay. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, there's one thing that I really enjoy and love about country music. The lyrics, they say something and mean things. <laughs> and when I found this song, I uh, fell in love with it because of the fact that Memories. We got anybody celebrating a divorce. <laughs> well, I thought you might get a kick out of this one because the, the title of it is Your Memory and What It Used to Be.
song when I recorded and I still think it's a pretty song today and I'm going to do it for you. It's called Couldn't Love Have Picked a Better Place to Die. All right? Take a listen. Of all the people in the world why you and I and with lovers here and everywhere who don't care like the song. Back in 1976-77, I was fortunate enough in uh, California to uh, walk off with quite a few awards. In fact, uh, they gave me every award that night except the female vocalist award. <laughs> and one of the awards I received an award for was a song, which I thought was, uh, at the time, was one of the, the great things that happened to yours truly. And uh, it was a Remake of another old song, and I feel like even to listen to the records today is one of the best records I made back in the 70s. And I hope that you agree with me because uh, we're going to do it for you. It's called Bring It On Home. <laughs>
Well, we're getting closer to the 80s. And uh, along about this time, producer comes in with this song. And I told him at the time when he walked in with the song, I said, that's one of the finest songs I'd ever heard in my life. It's a great song. Let me take it out and play it for my friend Conway Twitty. <laughs> at the time in the 70s, I was traveling with Conway. So I take the song out, and I play it for Conway. I said, Conway, I found this song. I think this is a dynamite tune. I'm thinking about recording it. What do you think? Listen to it. Tell me what you think. Played it for him on his bus. He looked at me, and he says, I don't think you need to do this one, Gilly. I said, really, why not? He said, don't you know the ladies buy the most records? I said, well, probably. They shop a lot more than men do. He said, no, no, no. He said, think about this a minute now. You're putting them down talking about them getting better looking at clothes in town. I said, Conway, let me tell you something. My drinking buddies will love this song because it's a true story. So I take a chance, I go in the studio, I record the song, and I'm hoping, oh, please, Lord, let it be a good record for me. It's turned out to be one of the most played recordings I ever made. <laughs> Not the best record I ever made, but one of the most played recordings because the song is such a true story, and it really is. And then when, the, when I started uh, singing the song on the road, and the ladies coming up to me, hey, can you hear the song about the girls getting better looking at clothes in time? And it dawned on me, wait a minute, the guys start looking better than them at clothes in time. <laughs> I did. Take 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 a quick little clip of this video screen up here, and uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do the song, and uh, and it'll prove to you the girls step better, get better looking at clothes in time. A one, two, a one, two, three, pick. <laughs> We started creeping into the uh, the eighties. My life took another change. I mean, for one time in my life, I'm having more things happen that I can keep up with. We had a chance to do a film 
with the one and only John Travolta. A film called Urban Cowboy at my nightclub in Pasadena, Texas called Gillies. And I don't mind telling you, it was one of the biggest things that ever happened in my career in my life. And we had some wonderful times. Unbelievable the things that were happening all of a sudden. They came in with the uh, trucks to do this film. And we were working on music. John Lee found the song Looking for Love. My producer came in and recorded Stand By Me on Yours Truly. And we both had number one songs uh, out of the film. I did uh, another song called Here Comes a Hurt Again and several other different tunes. But uh, we're going to do some of them for you in a few minutes. But so hang in here with us for, for a moment. I got to tell you that uh, it changed my life. The one, one thing that happened to is after we did the film, a lot of the doors opened up for me that I never dreamed it would happen. All the showrooms in Vegas, Reno, Tahoe, and Atlantic City opened up. I went to Europe. I came back. I got to play for two presidents at the White House, President Ronald Reagan, President George Bush Sr. They invited me to come out to Hollywood and gave me a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, that was exciting. I don't mind telling you. And all these things were happening. Just so happens, too, that the producer that they hired to record my future projects, he had recorded Stand By Me for yours truly on the film The Urban Cowboy. And they hired him to come in and do uh, the future productions. He called a recording session, and one of the songs he picked was a remake of another old song. And I didn't want to do it. He said, don't worry about it. I said, look, the best version of that song happened to be by Ray Charles. And I said, I can tell you right now, sir, that Mickey Gilly cannot follow Ray Charles. He says, don't worry about it. It's going in an album. I recorded the song. The record company liked it so much, they decided they'd release it as a single. The song comes out on a single and starts climbing the charts and goes number one for me. And then I get the thrill of my life and my career. I get to sing it with Ray. Now, I'm going to play our version of it, and then you'll understand why I didn't want to try to follow Ray. All right? And then I'll do our version of it for you. You don't know me. Here it is. No, you don't know the one. It dreams of you at night. And longs to kiss your lips. Well, that hair was black. <laughs> and wants to hold you tight. Do you run from the dream? You hear me, Ray? I do. And that's all that I've ever been. I think you got to know why they want to try to follow Ray Charles with that song. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, here's our version of it. You give your hand to me, then you say hello, and I can hardly speak. My heart is beating so
you very much. Back in 1983, John Lee and I were working at a little place called Harris in Lake Paradise Tahoe. Paradise tonight. A casino. And I get a call from the producer of Chips. If you're unfamiliar with that show, that's uh, Eric Estrada doing the cop show. They were doing a scene at the Palomino Club in North Hollywood, and they wanted me and John Lee to come in and be a part of what they were shooting. So at the time, I had a had an airplane. I could afford it then. <laughs> had a pilot. And even though I was a pilot myself, I had a pilot to go with me. Made it a lot easier. We jump in the airplane, and we fly to Burbank. They pick us up, take us over to Palomino Club. I walk in. On the stage performing was a little lady named Charlie McLean. So she comes off the stage, and I walk over to her and I say, Charlie, how do you feel about doing duets? I got the idea from watching Conway and Loretta. And she said, never thought about doing duets before, but uh, she would entertain the offer. I said, well, if you're ever interested, let me know. We record for the same label. There won't be any contract problems. It'd be nice to do some duets with you, you know. We could travel together a little bit. She said, okay. I leave. I didn't hear from her. About six months later, I'm at the Hall of Shame. I mean, fame. He means the uh, bar. Okay, I was at the bar. I was having a little nippy-poo at the Hall of Fame Motor Inn at the bar. Again. I was having a little nippy poo, you know what I mean? Again. I was enjoying myself. Again. Again. <laughs> and I, I get this call from Darrell Wilson. That was uh, Charlie McLean's producer. They knew where to find me at. <laughs> this is before cell phones now. This is 1983, right? So I go to the phone. He says, Gilly, I understand you want to sing with Charlie McLean. I said, well, we talked about it about six months ago when I was in... Uh, out in North Hollywood at the Palomino Club. I said, never heard from her. He said, well, I'm down here working with her on an album. Won't you come down? I turned to the guy flying my airplane with me. I said, hey, let's jump in the car and go down and listen to Charlie McLean a little bit. We get down to the studio, walk in. As we walk through the door, first thing the producer says to me, want to make this next song a duet? I said, well, I guess so. I, fine with me, you know. And since we recorded for the same label, it didn't matter. We, I walk out in the recording studio. They're working on this song called Paradise Tonight. We record it. About 90 minutes later, we have recorded Paradise Tonight. As I'm leaving the studio that night, I turned to the guy flying my airplane with me. I said, Cliff, that has got to be the biggest piece of junk I think I've ever recorded. <laughs> About 22 weeks later, it's number one, the country charts. I backed up. I looked him right straight in the eye again. I said, hey, Cliff, you know that song, Paradise Tonight? He said, yeah. I said, it's a pretty good record, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it with George Gina. Here it is. It's called Paradise Tonight. So alone. 
got to say a special thanks to a gentleman that works here at the Opry for many, many years. And uh, he worked with me on the road also. Mr. Bobby Randall's back here playing guitar. I, I guitar player uh, called me at the last minute and said, I'm sorry, I got COVID. I can't come. I said, thank you. <laughs> we got here, and Bobby says, well, I can play the show with you. I said, you can? Been doing one great job. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I had a request for food for your love. Are you all ready for this one? <laughs> I'm just a fool for oh, you, baby. I'm just a fool. It's time for my favorite drinking song. All right? Yes, indeed. That's my favorite drinking song. Red Solo Cup. I'll fill it up. Let's have a party. I'm so glad that Toby Keith came with a Red Solo Cup song. You know what that means? Drinking's in. And let me tell you folks something right now. If you had what I got in this cup, swallow of it, I would sound a lot better to you. So you know what? I'm going to take a swallow of it so I'll sound better to me. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Help now. Pay more. I probably deserve that one, didn't I? <laughs> uh, well, I got to tell you folks something. If you had what I had in that cup right there, I would sound a lot better to you. Because water's always good for you. You have a drinking crowd? You know, we had a lot more drinking than the first show. (laughs) 
I guess they had to get drunk so they could cope with the day. I don't know. <laughs> Do we have a lot of non-drinkers here? <laughs> yeah, they always let a few in. <laughs> hey, Reverend Swaggers will be proud of you non-drinkers. <laughs> Nikki Gilly feels sorry for the non-drinking crowd. Because I know you're going to get up in the morning and that's the best you're going to feel all day. <laughs> I play you the famous record I made in 1957. I want to tell you about a very special thing that uh, we have here uh, at the uh, Opry, and it's um, a book on my me and my two famous cousins, Reverend Swaggart and Jerry Lee Lewis, and it is called Unconquered. Now, if you want to know why it's called that, you got to buy the book. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> uh, I have signed a few cases of them, and uh, since we don't do autographs with, with this COVID thing going around. Quite a few of these books are over there at the product counter if you want to stop by and take a look. Everybody says it's a good read that's read it. Somebody said, did you read it? I said, I didn't have to. I lived it. <laughs> anyway, keep that in mind when you go by the product counter out there. The book. The book, Unconquered. Nikki Gilly, Jerry Lewis, and Reverend Swaggart, Our Life in the Book. Uh, let me see, where was that? I'll tell you what. In 1957, my cousin Jerry Lee Lewis comes into Houston, Texas, singing a whole lot of shaking. I got to run around with him. I saw how well he was doing in the music business, and I was working in a construction gang, making $1.25 an hour. And I'm thinking, well, if he can do this, I can too. So I saved up $200 and went to the recording studio and made my first recording. <laughs> and there was only 500 copies of the record pressed up. 300 of the copies were sent back to the guy that produced it on me because it didn't sell. And he takes them home with him. 
His house catches on fire, burns the 300 copies up along with the master tape, which meant that 200 copies of this song that I had recorded got out in Houston, Texas. One side of the recording was called Tell Me Why, and the other side was called Ooh Wee Baby. My first record. Wrote both sides of the recording. And so let's spring now forward about 50 plus years. I walked in my office down in Texas. My office manager walks over to me. Gilly, did you ever do a song called Ooh Wee Baby? I said, how did you hear this? She said, I, I didn't hear it. I, I, I got an email from a Yo Play yogurt company in Ireland, and they're wanting to use a song called Ooh Wee Baby by Mickey Gilly in a commercial. <laughs> I said, you send them an email, and you tell them they got the wrong Ooh Wee Baby. So she did. <laughs> Immediately, we get a reply back. The one we have is by Mickey Gilly. He's the guy that wrote and recorded the song. How much does he want for a 30-second clip of this particular song, Ooh Wee Baby? We want to use it in a Yo Play Yogurt commercial. I said, you send them an email and ask them what the going rate is. <laughs> so she did. Now, I'll tell you what. I'm going to play you the commercial. It's only 30 seconds long. And then I'm going to tell you what they gave me for it, all right? And, folks, it was a windfall. <laughs> Here's Mickey Gilly singing for the Yo Play Yogurt Company in Ireland. They ran the commercial three years in Ireland, never brought the commercial to the States. And for the three years they used that song, they sent me a total. You ready? But I paid $200 now to make that recording. Fifty-something years later, they send me a total of $55,000. Well, I could have used it back in '57. Well, I tell you what, uh, I've had an awesome night with you folks tonight, and I hope you enjoyed yourself and had a good time with yours, too, the Urban Cowboy Band. <laughs> Do a little medley of tunes from the soundtrack to film the Urban Cowboy for you and bring you up to date and tell you that uh, I was at the keyboard playing piano and singing this song when John Travolta and his uncle first walked into the nightclub Gillies back in 1979 and 80 when we did the film the Urban Cowboy. It went like this.
I take it. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. How about it?